Oh, Ghana, there, Boko. I mean, the roads are getting a little better, but still. The infrastructure is getting better, the roads, eh? Just a little better, but it, can, little it needs bit. a lot of improvement. I see. A lot of improvement. A lot of improvement. I run about in the crowd. I'm going to have a stop sign, baby. I'm going to have a stop sign. And no, don't worry. Vodka, you may be in the stop sign. It's true. Yes, that's one of our projects I did yeah, yeah, this year. And yeah, and yeah, run about in the There's a lot of intercessions out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it too much? Accidents, man. Who was that? Hey. Yeah. Right in front of you. Right in front of me. A body pack tray. A body pack. We cried there. Just a a a boy now. A Oko too. Your friend is saying taxi driver and I in the mirror. I'm a taxi driver and I start charging. <laughs> I'm a taxi driver and I charge your car. Hey, oh my god. I want to turn the bottom in a genesica. The other car, the other car, I'm born. when you're here, and I'm so tears come on taxi driver. Are you kidding me? When TV crown will be that other than yeah, the car bonon. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good, but you know, I think there's a lot of improvement in Ghana. It's good in what sense? I mean, the city is still at four three, uh, between four two four three. Right now, it's at four three. Now, in New Manon, so I mean, is there more jobs? Because now, Akufado said job creation is the one of the greatest challenges that Ghana for facing. I mean, I I would say I personally didn't get too deep into it, but with the devaluation of the currency itself, mm -hmm. I don't think the economy is in the best state. You know, when I was in 08, the dollar with, with the Ghana City was basically one for one. Mm -hmm. Now, four Ghana Cities can get you one dollar, basically. Right. So that's that's a huge difference. Yeah, are you talking about 08, though? That's, yeah, that's, that's true. That's, that's a good point. But you still, know, I yeah. think that's there's a lot of room for it. I mean, I see I see good improvement, but mm -hmm. I see way more ahead. Yeah, and that was the transition from MPP to NDC at that mm -hmm. time. 08, that's true. Uh, so, That's true. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But yes, the uh, what about the security? Uh, you know, the police and those oh. people. Uh, <laughs> we did. I'm a cat. My men Joe five and adults too much corruption. <laughs> oh, Erade, I'm the one. 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 I'm there's no No reason offense be I no answer oh my five, my ten be. I don't know bro need to I said I but we went with some some visitors. Yeah. So I think that was a big reason why. Wow. What's it? Yeah, corruption and they are dosing too much. Yeah, they? Kasa, I'm on my end. Kasa will preach. You better what's here? You see your name? Now you give me. Oh my, Voga. You better say something. Jeff, over to you. And then I'll my end. All right. So today we'll be talking about something brand, pretty much brand new, um, called digital currency. Um, you know, it's it's a new technology out there. It's actually a new form of payment. Um, so it's it's definitely something interesting that I want everyone to get to know about. Thank you all for tuning in to WGAC 98.3 FM, your voice, your music, your station. My name is Jeff Badu, and I'm a licensed certified public accountant in the state of Illinois. I'm the owner and practitioner of my firm, Badu Tax Services, and my firm specializes in tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation for individuals and businesses. Um, so really today, the topic of discussion is on digital currency. It's a very, very hot topic out there right now. Unfortunately, not everyone knows about it. And so I believe it warrants a discussion today. But before we go into that, I would like to talk about the markets and what happened last week. And so the market report as of July 7, 2017, um, stocks ended 
you know, a little higher last week. Not too, not too much, but ultimately they ended up a little higher um, despite falling energy prices. Um, so the Dow and the S&P 500 rose last Friday on the heels of June's strong labor report. And then of the indexes, the Dow led the way, followed by the NASDAQ and then the global Dow. The yield on the 10-year treasuries climbed closer to its 2016 closing value as long-term bond prices fell, sending yields higher, which there's always an inverse relationship with that. And then the price of crude oil went down a little bit from 46 46.33 per barrel to 44.30 per barrel. And then ultimately the price of gold also went down from 12.41.40 to 12.12. And so overall the market last week, there wasn't really much happening. Um, you know, changes were below 1% for across everything really. One thing to note is that the Federal Reserve did increase interest rates recently. Um, so they've done two interest rate increases this year, with a third one expected pretty soon. Um, probably, I would say, around December. But so that's really the market in a nutshell. Still no no real need to panic or anything like that. We're still in a pretty good position. Um, you know, me personally, I'm fresh fresh off coming from Ghana just this, this afternoon, actually. Um, so I didn't, I didn't really get a chance to look deeply into the markets while I was gone. Um, but just know that there's still really no need to panic when it comes to this stuff. And so today's topic is digital currency. Um, this a bunch of fancy names. You have cryptocurrency, cryptos, digital coins, blockchain. All these fancy words is essentially um, digital money or digital assets. And so really that's the topic of discussion today. It's a really hot topic. Very, very hot. I mean, if you're missing the boat out on this, you've missed out. Huge. You know, because Bitcoin back then was trading at less than a dollar. And I'll talk about more of these things, but now it's over $2,000. And so it's it's really something not to be missing out. But let's get right into it. So there's a new hot form, very hot form of currency. It's an actual currency that you can buy and sell, you can trade. It's called digital currency. And cryptocurrencies, which digital assets or which is a digital asset are seen as the next evolution of, of the monetary systems and so with cryptocurrencies the nice things is that it's um, pretty much it's decentralized so it's all peer-to-peer -peer. It's, it's hey you know it you have coins I have coins let's trade with each other so there's no Federal Reserve system involved there's no high regulation or anything like that it's something that's really you know, peer-to-peer -peer base. It's all system to system. And then the nice thing too is that transaction fees are much lower um, than your traditional banking. Let's say you were to go to a bank or use your ATM at another bank. You know, they'll probably charge you a, a, a pretty large ATM fee. But with digital currency such as Bitcoin, there's really not that much because it's all it's a decentralized system. And then also, you have so also with with a technology like this. Remember, all this stuff, this digital currency, it's all technology based. And so, what happens is that things are processed at a much faster speed. It's um, it's a very quick, easy transaction. Versus you, um, pro let's say you you go into Walgreens or something and then buying buying something with your debit card. It's gonna take a while for the bank, you know, to get to get all of that um, reading going or transactions and things like that. But with Bitcoin and digital currency, it's instant. They already know it's all peer to peer. Um, so essentially, you also have the ability to store your assets. So if you have Bitcoin or any sort of digital currency, you can store them. You know, think of it like a safe. So a nice thing or a funny thing with digital currency is that it relates to real money in some way, shape or form. So you can store your assets, in other words, put it in a safe or put it in a bank account, um, and, and things such as a web wallet. You know, it's, it's basically, you can store your Bitcoin inside of a computer, and that would be your bank right there. Um, but just keep in mind if that if you're using a physical hardware to store your blockchain or digital coin, digital currency assets, if you lose that, which has happened before, 
They said there was a guy who threw his computer away for whatever reason, but he had some Bitcoin on it, and he lost well over a million dollars. You know, so if you're storing your Bitcoin in an actual hard drive, let's say on a flash drive, it's probably not the best place to be because you could easily lose it. You know, somebody can come steal it. The nice thing, though, is that it's very, um, the encryption is very heavy. Um, so it's very hard to crack the code on a Bitcoin, for example. It's all technology based. There's not a real physical asset. It's not like real, real dollars. It's something that's all system to system. It's all exchange based. And so, so digital currency, it's, it's a new form of currency that everybody needs to know about because, you know, lo and behold, we might not be carrying physical dollars anymore. We might just be carrying bitcoins in our wallets or in our phones now. And now every time we go to Walgreens, instead of pulling out an ATM card, we're going to pull out our Bitcoin app, tap the machine, and then they take out whatever transaction, um, how much ever it costs out of the Bitcoin that we have. So just keep that in mind in that this is something new. This is very revolutionary. Um, it's, it's very innovative. Um, and so think of it like PayPal. You, know, you have PayPal where... You link your bank account or you link a, a credit card or debit card or something like that. Or you can even use PayPal credit, you know, to pay somebody for a, a product or service. And so instead of you actually pulling out your physical cash to pay someone, you're storing it in your PayPal wallet, you know, to give to somebody else. It's the same concept with digital currency. But now, see, PayPal is not an actual currency. Digital currency is an actual currency. Bitcoin is an actual currency. You can actually pay somebody in Bitcoin. You know, although you can pay somebody in PayPal, PayPal is not traded on an exchange like Bitcoin is. And so some history behind cryptocurrencies. So the most popular cryptocurrency out there right now is called Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a blockchain technology. It's, you know, the most fancy terms. It's a digital currency. It's a cryptocurrency. And essentially, it was first introduced in 2008. And so Bitcoin was slowly gaining momentum. You know, it rose and then it just just tanked. It rose, tanked, rose, tanked. Now it's at a point where it's pretty consistent. I mean, it's still falling, rising here and there, but the swings are not as big as it used to be. You know, Bitcoin once crashed and people lost a lot of money. And so now Bitcoin is a lot more stable. People trust the technology a lot more. So now it's, it, it's, it's seen as a safer asset. And guess what? Bitcoin is actually worth more than gold right now. So as we were saying, gold is around, let's see. Say gold, gold is at 1212 um, per ounce, essentially, or 1212. The price of Comax gold was twelve, $1,212. And Bitcoin, as of the last time I checked, was around $2,300. So Bitcoin is $1,000 more than gold itself, the brick that we all know it to be, which is insane. You know, so this is something that you must pay attention to when you hear something like this. And so Bitcoin, just like gold, you know, unlike PayPal, Bitcoin, just like gold, can be traded on an exchange because it has a monetary value associated with it. And so you can go out there and you can buy and sell Bitcoin, just like in the stock market. And so you can also buy things online. So you can go to a store, like a, a Nike store or something, or an online store and pay them with your Bitcoin. Um, so this is something very brand new, very revolutionary. Um, only came out in 2008. Um, but just know that you can actually buy and sell things with Bitcoin and then due to its high security measures and convenience of use I mean it's you don't have to go out to any bank and pull out anything you you're using your app or something or you're using something where you store the assets um, you know demand is growing extremely fast and that's why Bitcoin grew so much like I was saying I remember Bitcoin was trading at less than a dollar a share or a dollar just less than a dollar period and now it's trading at over $2,000. So had you put money into it, you know, a few years ago, your money would have just went crazy.
crazy. I know millionaires to this day who became millionaires because of Bitcoin um, and, and then the other digital assets. And so really what does this mean? So I just talked about, you know, there's new technology out there. It's, it's something you have to know about because it's going to change our lives. It's going to change the way we do things, the way we pay, the way we conduct transactions and conduct business. So we must know things like this. But what is this as well? It's an opportunity for investors like myself to get in. Um, so me personally, I own shares of Bitcoin, um, also Ethereum. And so just some more history behind it. So there are now over 700 different kinds of cryptocurrencies out there right now. And so the most popular one is Bitcoin, but you also have what's known as Ethereum. Um, and then you also have what's known as Litecoin. So those three are the most popular ones out there. And so what you can do is you can actually buy them on a site. Um, there's various sites out there, but you can buy them on a site called Coinbase. And so Coinbase is simply an app or it's a it's a web a website essentially where you can go in just like you would log into your TD Ameritrade account or any stock brokerage account. You go to the site, you create your account. It takes no more than two minutes. Um, and then ultimately, you you know, you, you put in your bank info, you put, you put in all that good stuff. And now you're able to buy your digital assets or your cryptocurrencies. And so on Coinbase, <clears throat> you have, um, you essentially, you have, you have Bitcoin, you have Ethereum, and then you have Litecoin. And so Coinbase allows you to buy and sell partial shares or whole shares of these digital currencies or these digital assets. And like I was saying, I personally own shares in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. My biggest holdings, I would say, would be Ethereum because, you know, a friend of mine introduced me to it and it's it's grown a lot ever since I first got in it. And I, I'll actually show you the price that I personally got in and you'll probably be shocked. And and just know that this thing can be said. <laughs> See, the, the guy's on there. He, he just shouted himself out. Shout out to Eddie, by the way. <laughs> but essentially, so you can buy and sell you can buy and sell um, digital currency or you can buy and sell these digital assets just like you would stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and things like that. So you can buy and sell them on this exchange. And Coinbase is essentially one platform where you can buy and sell your, your Bitcoin or your, um, your Ethereum. And keep in mind, these things are instant in most cases. And that if you buy, let's say you buy... Let's say you bought Ethereum at, let's say, $30 a share. <clears throat> and then a month later, it went up to $200 a share. You can instantly sell it and make that profit of $170. You know, minus all the transaction fees and things like that. Um, so you can buy and sell it just like you would stocks. You know, it has a monetary value associated with it. So this is how investors like myself profit off things like this. And then we buy them. You know, we, we buy them at a pretty low price, hopefully at a pretty low price, and then we sell them at a higher price and ultimately take that profit. And like I was saying, to this day, I still own shares in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, you know, just to diversify my portfolio just a little bit. Um, it's not truly a diversified strategy because it's the same asset class. It's a digital currency. Um, but... You know, you never want to put all your eggs in Bitcoin or Ethereum. You want to spread it out just a little bit. Um, although you want to put your primary holdings or your primary focus on what you believe is going to be doing the best in the future. And so Ethereum is really known to have better technology um, than Bitcoin. And so with that being said, it means that Ethereum has a very high potential to surpass Bitcoin. Remember, Bitcoin is trading at over $2,000 per share or per unit. Um, Ethereum right now, as of when I last checked, was at about $200 per share or per unit. And remember, Ethereum was trading at $20 a share just a few months ago. That's the price that I actually got in at. Now it's worth over $200. As a matter of fact, it was worth over $400 just a few weeks ago. Uh, but blockchain or digital currencies in general have taken a slight hit. 
Um, but I don't think I don't I think it's something that's temporary. Um, I don't think this is something that will last forever. And so if you're really looking to buy in, even though you might not be able to get in at twenty dollars a share, you know, getting in at two hundred dollars a share, knowing that it just went up to four hundred dollars a share just a few weeks ago, I mean that's that's still a pretty good profit. You know, you'd have at a minimum doubled your money. Um so that's that's just something to look into. You know, many experts are saying that Ethereum is going to get to five hundred dollars a share by the end of this year. Um, some say it will get to a thousand within the next few years. You know, so me personally, I'm in a buy and hold situation where, you know, I'm I'm buying them at these low prices or fairly low prices, and then holding on to them um, in order to, you know, hopefully make a profit in the future. You know, they were saying that back then, had you invested a hundred dollars, just a hundred dollars, into Bitcoin, you'd have had about seven million dollars right now. So that's just a hundred dollars. You know, I, I can think of a million things that you can spend a hundred dollars on right now, um, but just a hundred dollars into Bitcoin just a few years ago would have led you seven million dollars today, or when Bitcoin was like super hot, when it was approaching about three thousand dollars per share per unit. And so, just you know, really, that's. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind is that this is a new technology. It's an opportunity for you to profit. Um, it's, you know, with, with Bitcoin and all these digital currencies, there are really a few ways to make money. So you can buy and sell, you know, just like I do. I try to buy and hold. Um, you can actually accept payments. So let's say you're a business owner, you're a service provider. You can now accept payments saying, hey, you know, I have this digital wallet. I would like to accept payments in the form of Bitcoin or Ethereum or something like that. And people can now pay you in digital currency. As crazy as it sounds, now they're not paying you cash or money. They're paying you in a digital, a um, you know, something you can't even see, a digital asset, a digital currency. It's not something you go to the bank and, you know, pull out money from the ATM. This is truly a technology-based system to system, peer-to-peer um, decentralized based technology uh, where you don't have to worry about physical goods or physical assets. <clears throat> and so another way to make money with this stuff is through mining. So mining is as crazy as it sounds, just like you mine for gold, you can actually mine for digital currency. You can mine bitcoins. And you actually have a farm. As also crazy as it sounds, you have a farm that you can actually mine on. And so mining, you need some very heavy-duty technology. Um, I guarantee you that if you only have one or two laptops, you're probably not going to be a successful miner. Maybe back then when the technology wasn't as strong, but now it's as strong as ever. So in order to mine that technology, you need some pretty high fire firepower. So what some people do now is they just pay a company um, to mine for them. You know, they have, you see like a, thousands and thousands of computers just sitting next to each other very powerful systems and what they're doing is they're mining they're producing more bitcoin or ethereum or litecoin and things like that so keep in mind this is something new um this is something very innovative it's going to change the way we do things the way we conduct business the way we pay for things um and it's a chance for people to profit you know unfortunately you know a lot of people don't really know about this stuff. It's it's something new. They're like, oh, you know, I don't trust it. it it's it's definitely out there. You know, if it wasn't for a good friend of mine introduce me introducing me to blockchain, I would have never got in, to be honest. You know, I heard all the horror stories about the technology being broken and, and all these crazy things, security issues, but now they're all pretty much resolved uh, because they've gotten better over time. Um... And then, you know, although these assets are highly risky, I would say you shouldn't miss out on this opportunity. Remember, sites like Coinbase allow you to buy partial shares into um, into Bitcoin or Ethereum. Let's say you only have five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars. You know, Bitcoin costs two grand right now. You can actually put your partial fifteen dollars into Bitcoin and get you your partial shares, so that you at least least have some skin in the game 
you know, it's um, you don't necessarily need ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars. As a matter of fact, I started off with a hundred dollars. That's how I start off with all these investments, a hundred dollars. You know, a hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there, and then over time, see how it performs, and then you put more money into it. You know, so unfortunately, if you're seeing something trading at one dollar, and you bought in a hundred dollars, and then the next few months, you see it go up to ten dollars, you're like. I wish I would have put more money into it. You know, it's it's not, I would say it is, partially it's greed, um, but at the same time, it's just emotions going into it, your investments. So I always say start small and think big. Um, you don't need huge sums of money to get into this Bitcoin stuff. Um, you know, you just need a few dollars here and there and just see how it is. You know, go to Coinbase, go create an account and just see, just see how it is. Um, and it's actually, I would say it's a pretty good time to buy right now because the technology or the the digital currencies, the digital assets or the cryptocurrencies are taking a hit, um, a small hit right now. And then, and then also keep in mind one thing that digital currency may become the most popular form of currency in history, like ever, much more than gold, paper assets, fiat currency, all these different types of currencies, uh, monet I mean, this this can become much more popular than paper currency. All of these things combined, and then I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes more widely accepted across the globe. You know, instead of you having to go to, let's say, you go to Ghana like I did, and you have some Bitcoin. Unfortunately, you know, people don't really accept Bitcoin in Ghana right now. You can't just go to a store. And say, hey, I have some Bitcoin for you. You know, but I think in the future, as technology gets more widely used, widely accepted by these companies and things like that, I truly think that we won't have to, you know, exchange money whenever we go to a, a foreign country. We're just going to use our Bitcoin or our digital currencies. And now we have a global currency where everything is the same, essentially. We don't have to worry about exchange rates and things like that. We all have bitcoins. We all have, you know, we're all doing business with digital currency. And so this is something to keep in mind. This is huge. You know, this is something, it's, it's slowly getting popular and popular by the day. More and more people are getting into this bitcoin stuff. And that's why you see these prices out, you know, they're pretty outrageous right now. Like I said before, bitcoin is worth more than gold right now. It's actually, the probably the most expensive um, form of asset there is and so just keep in mind this this is really the future you know technology is taking over you see drones flying everywhere Amazon's taking over the world um, with all the technology that they're doing Google Apple I mean technology is really you know you're gonna see robots in people's houses autonomous vehicles flying cars I mean all these you know the technology game is it's pretty huge. It only gets better by the day. Um, so something like this, where your actual money now is all technology driven, you know, I think it would be wise to at least do some research, you know, get on Coinbase, get to learn about these digital currencies. Um, so it's it's really not much different than, than you, you know, you pulling out a dollar out of your pocket or you, um, you know, changing or trading on Forex or something like that. It's all the same thing, other than this is this is a new form of currency. It's a digital, truly digital currency, and it's traded on an exchange where the price fluctuates on a daily basis. And the nice thing with digital currency and sites like Coinbase is that the market is open 24/7, um, unlike the stock market where it's open for a certain period of time. Keep in mind, the world is changing. You know, soon people will be paying each other with bitcoins. So the, the next thing, the next wave is, you know, we're, we're not going to ATMs anymore to hand each other cash. We're exchanging Bitcoins through apps and things like that. So that's, that's really the presentation for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, and I, I hope that I can guarantee you that 10 years from now, Bitcoin will be extremely, I mean, extremely popular. And I, I don't think I'll be carrying around cash anymore. You know, your phone is going to be your new cash. You know, so that's um, that's one thing that I I definitely encourage everyone to get to learn more about this because this is something that 
doesn't just affect the U.S., but this is a global thing. You know, this is something that's going on globally. So thank you all for tuning in to WGAC 98.3 FM, your voice, your music, your station. Once again, my name is Jeff Badu, and I look forward to continuously talking to you about money. Thank you. And welcome back, Ablanti Jeff, uh, the community best accountant. Uh, I put the best there because he knows what he's doing. Thank you, man. You're putting us to the future, man. You know, like things that are happening. That's, that's what's mm -hmm. up. Again, I'm a Kwaba, Ghana from Maka Krako Bowl. Now, I'm a Kubibi, I'm from Tadjubi. I'm a Kubibi. Hey, I'm a pet. I'm a pet. I'm i me ra who ye papa papa in so many ways. I don't know, Jeff, who quite not diaspora, you know what? Hey, uh Dylan Swap <laughs> Dylan. Dylan so called Ghana. Uh Dylan went to Ghana uh from Smurfs. Hey, remember I'm telling you now you deal with it. Uh, nice one. Dylan from uh, Legends was called Ghana Kakra. We will see stress. We want. Nice one. What's it? Ikuigui. 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 You stress are good. Remember I'm telling you now, but come on. Dylan, I'm going to December. Mike, the money. Uh, 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 Jeff is here called Ghana. I said, Dan, 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 New government, I'm out for so plan or more pay you meant to know. So you see, government for friend, I see a man of time near her. No one's a matter of what the cost is so your team like when you accident, yeah, it's confirmed. Yeah, oh, I don't know. That's all cry, cotton coins. Oh, 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 most of my Marantia, you are you are pushing on. I don't know, and I I am going to play this take uh, this take for you. Uh, uh, I said I remember tape on you know, the minister of uh, foreign, I think the foreign affairs, right? Um, uh, a Jaco or something like that. Is it Jaco or Sher Shirley Butchie or something? I don't know. Something. Um, did a promo. Said. Uh, the diaspora should come 